Hi, my name is Jesse Stewart. I'm a first year radiology resident at Duke. And I'm here to discuss our study on uh, tunnel peritoneal drainage catheter placement for refractory ascites and our experience in 188 patients. None of our authors have any financial disclosures. So the purpose of our study was to evaluate the use of tunnel peritoneal drainage catheters for the management of refractory ascites. And for this, we evaluated the clinical success, the safety of the procedure, and the complication rate associated with the catheters. So refractory ascites often occurs secondary to metastatic malignancy, and this can, can occur secondary to peritoneal infiltration by tumor, liver metastases that can result in portal venous compression, and also lymphatic obstruction. The life expectancy of patients with um, refractory ascites secondary to metastatic malignancy is about one to four months. Other causes of refractory ascites include heart failure and also advanced liver disease. The symptoms of ascites can be very uncomfortable for patients, and it includes painful abdominal distension, shortness of breath, and GI symptoms including nausea and vomiting. And the current management of refractory ascites is centered around repeated large volume paracentesis, which is very inconvenient for patients, especially during what is often the last weeks of their life when they have to go make repeated visits to their healthcare providers to get uh, procedures and also it exposes them to increased risk from repeated procedures and the discomfort associated with that. It can also be treated with diuretics, with intraperitoneal chemotherapy for patients with malignant ascites, and also with tips for patients with liver failure. So the tunnel peritoneal drainage catheter is an appealing option for patients because it allows them to manage their refractory ascites at home whenever they become symptomatic or on a regular basis to remove fluid. We placed it in the IR suite under ultrasound and fluoroscopic guidance. And this is an image showing one of the catheter drainage systems that we use. So our study is a retrospective study uh, for which we compiled 188 consecutive patients with refractory ascites between January 2006 and August of 2012. 83 of the patients were male, 105 were female, and the average age of was 59 years. For this, we reviewed the electronic medical records for the patient history, for procedural records, and for clinical follow-up documents. The catheter endpoint was defined as the date of removal of the catheter, the date of death of the patient with the catheter in place, or the date of the last clinical document if that information wasn't available. So we found that there were 193 catheter placements or interventions in these 188 patients. 175 patients had their catheters placed for malignant ascites. The three most common malignancies that they were placed for, uh, for uh, ascites of that etiology, were ovarian cancer with 22% of the patients, pancreatic cancer, and breast cancer. 13 patients.